have a snare in today and uh, it's been a long time since I've really you know done any amount of it I guess as a kid I did an awful lot like as a teenager I had a little rabbit line and every night after school I'd go out and and uh, you know I'd take probably an hour to do the run I had to run you know actually I was coughing right along because you know you get back from school off the bus you don't have a lot of time before dark so but anyway long story short is that it would bring back a lot of good memories and that's basically why I do it you know every couple of three years I'll go out set a few snares just for a weekend last time I did it was two three years ago with Emily and her kids and uh, so this time this year I figured I'd do it again and um, do a catch and cook kind of video for you guys I'm gonna do a probably do a rabbit pot pie kind of thing so along the way I'll kind of show you guys some of my setups and and also just kind of you know what I look for I guess where to put my snares and and um, the size of my snares how far off the ground it's something that anyone can do if uh, you know if you got kids out there that want to do something like that you know you don't have to buy you know run the traps that can hurt them you know corner bear traps and stuff it's just a small brass wire I mean you can't hurt anybody you're not gonna catch your dog or anything like that in these so it's a uh, it's kind of a fun thing you can do as a family you know if you want to do a campfire have some hot chocolate while you're out there if you can get some decent days you can see there's tracks in through here but there's nothing here worth setting up on yet you know you want to find an actual trail something that has multiple passes on it right here they're just kind of wandering you know you can see them there they're just wandering really so here's kind of what we're looking for kind of like a you can see a trail eh? it's like a runway so you obviously got more rabbits using the same trail trail going underneath that wall up there and one going that way so we're going to try to stay on this side of that so we get the traffic off both spots and right over here it naturally narrows up in through there so i think we're going to set something up in here where there's not a lot of deep powder it's going to be a little challenging because they're not going to stick to the same trails like i'm seeing a lot of you know yeah they got this runway here but you got a trail going that way and a trail going that way and then they just didn't go anywhere you know i mean they're not fighting deep snow to get around so when it's deep snow they really stick to the same trails which is really when you want to be ideally out here doing this so here guys we're using some uh, heavy duty snare wire brass um, it's 20 gauge you don't want to go too small if you go too small a lot of times you have problems with um you know they could break it off they um you don't go too big either i guess but that there's about what you want and uh your snares are going to be you're going to make them four inches round and um two and a half to two and three quarters inches high off the ground like the bottom of the snare that's what you're kind of looking for if you go too big what's going to happen is you're going to have um problems with um, them getting caught by the leg or, or by the body instead of the head so one thing you want to do before you start all this you want to get a piece of fur or cedar just put in your hands and uh, rub it in your hands what that does is it takes a lot of the scent human scent off and believe it or not rabbits will smell that what I do is I just make an eye go like that just twist it We're going to need about, and just kind of measure what you need roughly. A lot of people put a little chin up stick there. I don't bother with those chin up stick, but it's just, I guess, the idea is that they don't put their head under it. But I don't know, I've never really bothered. And um, this length right here, that's kind of pushing it. You see how easy that moves? Unless it hits it dead on, I may not get them. You know, I should have had my stick a little lower and uh, just kind of cut this distance in half, really. 
I've only got maybe two inches here or something like that two and three quarters inches off the ground two and a half two and three quarters four inch snare I got my sticks here to guide him in through this hole and uh, on either side of us there's a, a, a Y in the trail so you're getting you know the traffic from both trails you know I've been hunting for pretty much most of my life or at least you know in the outdoors I'd say probably since the age of 10 years old or so my dad introduced it to me brought me out snaring for rabbits and did some small game you know and just getting out there with my dad brought me to become an outdoorsman and enjoy being out here and doing this thing on my own later in life and you know bring my kids if they want to go they they don't have as much interest as i did but well, but they still enjoy coming out from time to time and i sure enjoy it when they come with me so so i mean ideally it's nice if you can find something that uh like a natural you know fence you know across the barbed wire fence or something you can hook onto that or or a natural stick laying across but i mean Realistically, that doesn't really happen very often. So a lot of times you just kind of got to make your own kind of setup. So I cut a little tree there and I'm going to tie it on on both ends. And then I'll just set my snare off of it, right? So I can I can adjust my height. I can make perfect, you know, the best of the of, of both worlds kind of thing. Another thing you keep in mind is to use um, old dead twigs here. And if you cut, use a, a good, you know, something that they eat, like fresh twigs, you know, like fresh hardwood twigs, you're gonna, you know, they could sit here and start eating your sticks and knock them over and, you know, but if you got dead stuff, they're just gonna think, well, I gotta run through that, you know, and there's no sense of me stopping here, you know, so you gotta kinda keep that in mind too, I guess, a little bit. So I'm going to do something different here, something I've never done before, we read about all the time, and uh, be wanting to try it. So, here it is. So what it is, as you can see, i got a trigger mechanism there, and uh, just a piece of wood with a hook on it, that kind of thing, like just cut a hook out of it. And um, it's hooked to this here tree that's going to want to bound, and uh, the idea is that when the, when the rabbit starts fighting, it's going to pick them up, and it's going to apply keep applying pressure on them let the hole I blocked a lot of that off because it's quite open here and um, you know I was kind of afraid to go around so I blocked off this whole area that should hopefully work It's going to go underneath a log. Let's go check it out. Again, just make sure you don't step on your trails, eh? Try not to anyway. I think we'll try to set one right there off that log. So this one here, that's the one with the log. The log's a little bit high. We'd probably end up having like six or eight inches of uh, wire hanging down just makes it kind of sloppy you know so I'm, I'm gonna I've been over a uh, alder tree here and yeah, I'll show you here I just bent over and we're gonna do another spring deal but I didn't bother putting the hook with a wire on it I just stuck a nail here which I'll remove by the way when I'm done here and um, I just put that there I mean when they get fighting that'll come off anyway right so just one less thing to go wrong, I guess. Well, I think that's going to be it for, for now. We've probably got, I didn't count them, but probably have about seven or so up maybe something like that six or seven so now at the end here I put two close together um, the trails were really 
you know, some going this way and some going that way, and it's kind of hard to really, you know, narrow down. But there was two main trails here, one going this way, one coming this way. So I put one right there, and I put another one right there. You can see the flagging tape. So it's on two different trails, but hopefully we'll have our bases covered. Well, the final count was six snares. We have two on the um, spring-loaded deal, and then we have four just regular ones that I just put a stick across and tied them in and went from there. So it's not a lot of snares, but like I say, we're not trying to get a lot of, a lot of rabbits here. Today. We just want a couple, so that should hopefully we'll get one or two, but we'll uh, see what happens in the morning. <laughs> Well, we're back at uh, 8 o'clock. Had a bunch of appointments today, so I couldn't uh, come any later. So, um, quite windy out there today. It's uh, something right here is pretty good, but in the field, it's something else. It's supposed to be minus 47 tomorrow morning, I feel like. So, it's supposed to be wicked windy here all day today and tomorrow, and we got a real cold snap coming in. So, hopefully, we can get this done uh, today. We'll go check it out and uh, if we do have something, I'm going to pull the, pull the snares out so I don't have to deal with it in the cold tomorrow. So here's our first one. And uh, as you can see, there's nothing there. So, but everything looks like it's still good, so we'll just leave it up for now and see uh, what we decide here when we get done looking. You see the deer walking our trail. Alright, we're on our way to check our fourth trap out. Here's that trail. Oh, we got one, guys. The spring loaded deal really didn't uh, seem to uh, work, but. I'm guessing it's because the uh, see, I was quite close to the base, so probably didn't when he was fighting. It probably didn't move the outer end very much, did it? So you know, come think of it, makes sense, I guess. But we got him anyhow. Real nice rabbit, guys. That's what we came here for. That's awesome because now we'll, uh, on the way back out, I'll pull my other snares. And uh, so we don't have to come in the morning there where it's going to be minus 47, I think is what they said. So, but uh, isn't that great? We'll be able to make ourselves a nice pot pie. Well, we've got two more to check here, so let's just see what we get. We got anything? So oh, there's one. Undisturbed. The other one is over here. And it's not bothered either, so. But that's alright. We got one. That's all we wanted anyway. Now what I'll do is I'll just wrap these up, you know, nicely and 
I can reuse it maybe next time we do this so it's not a waste so in a couple of years or whenever I decide to come back out I'll be able to just reuse the same snares and won't have to buy any more.